helps to keep your attention. So it'll be a three-week series. And I believe if you come and just really listen and take in what he's saying, I think it'll make a difference in your life. All right. So we're talking about the good life. It's for everyone. The, the, the verse we have for this particular series is Psalm 34, 8. It says this, Taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. The Lord is good. He wants us to have a life of joy, of fulfillment, a life of relationships, both with each other and with God, and to also have a life of hope. Now, there's some obstacles to the good life. Anybody agree with that? There's a few obstacles in life. We're going to talk about those today. We're going to talk about something that maybe we don't enjoy talking about all the time, but every once in a while we have to. We're going to talk about the fact that we have weaknesses. Now, I don't know about you, but I try real hard to hide my weaknesses. But sometimes they just come top and out. You just can't. You can't hide it from everybody. The only person that didn't have a weakness or a flaw was Jesus Christ. He was perfect. He was the perfect Son of God, God in the flesh. He was perfect. The rest of us, eh, not so perfect, right? Here are the primary negative emotions, according to Dr. James R. Beck, Christian psychologist and author. First of all, there is anxiety. Anybody ever have anxiety? Okay. I have everybody, huh? Well, you're in the right place. Well, I heard one person say, anxiety is when we spend a lot of time, a lot of energy, thinking about things that might go wrong. Anybody ever do that? Yeah. Anxiety. Angry hostility is the second negative emotion that us humans, we humans, we deal with. Someone who has anger hostility that to the extreme is someone who's looking to get mad. Looking for things for the frustrated so he or she can get mad. There's depression, sadness, discouragement. There's self-consciousness. Anybody ever feel self-conscious in life? Feel a lack of confidence? Anybody walk to a crowded room? And you think, you feel like everybody's looking at you, everybody have that, feel like that. I'm not the only one. I know they're not, but somehow I think everyone's looking at me. I think you guys are looking at me right now, in fact. I'm feeling a little self-conscious. Impulsive. Paul has the perfect definition as he talks about the plight of humanity, about being impulsive. The things that I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, I do do. And that gets me in big doo-doo, right? Now, Paul didn't say that last part. I, I kind of added that, but anyway. Impulsiveness. Anybody ever say something, you just, oh, I wish I could grab those words, just put them back in my mouth. Yeah, like me every day, I don't, I don't know. Vulnerability. When we feel incapable or dependent, feel overwhelmed, I can't make it. I feel overwhelmed. Okay. Now, I think... I don't know, I talk about me, I don't know about you, but I have felt each of these at a certain point in my life. Some of them I deal with, I struggle with more than others. But you know, the problem is, not only do I have my weaknesses I have to deal with, I got to deal with everybody else's too. I mean, it's like it's multiplied. But in spite of that, of these negative things, these emotions, and I think most of the failures we have morally, really, the sins we commit, is because we're dealing with these negative emotions that we all deal with. But in spite of that, my weakness cannot stop. I can still have a good life. This is the title for today's sermon. My weakness, it can't stop me. Because if weaknesses stopped us, then no one would ever have a good life. Because we all have them. We all have to deal with them in our life, and we all have to deal with them in everybody else's life. But we can still have a good life. My weakness can't stop me. Now, we're not going to have a perfect life. No one has a charmed life. We may look at someone and think they have a charmed life, but they don't have a charmed life. Has anybody ever met anybody that you knew very well that had a charmed life? If you raise your hand, you're going to ruin my sermon. Okay, so, so, so don't. Here's it, here's it. Come on, close that door back there, please. I appreciate that. There's a baby having a hard time. They're struggling. And, uh, you know, it's like everybody else. There's a, there's a famous prayer. It's by Reinhold Niebuhr. And I'm, I'm going to 
So look at the last part of it, not the first part. Probably all read the first part. This is the second part. It says, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, then I may be reasonably happy in this life. I'm not going to be supremely happy in this life. And I don't necessarily like the term reasonably happy. This is a great prayer. And I would never think that I could somehow improve upon that. But I would use a different word. I think I would use the word, I can be joyful in this life. And I can be supremely happy with him forever in the next. Or I would say exceedingly, extremely joyful. But the fact is, he's conveying is, we're not going to have a perfect life. That's just the way it is. But I can have a good life. I can have a joyful life. I can have a life of fulfillment. I can have a life of purpose. And I can have a life of meaningful relationships. And if I have those things, then I have a good life. Maybe you feel right now you don't have a good life. Maybe you're having, maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're having a hard time. Well, that's okay. We all go through that. Now, I'm a little, uh, you know, speaking of weaknesses, I'm a little obsessed with football. I'm sorry. Uh, I would like to say I'm trying to get over it, but I'm really not. Did anybody happen to catch the IU game yesterday? IU only got beat by three points. That is a victory, right? <laughs> only got beat by three points by Ohio State, 49 to 51. I feel like we won the Super Bowl. I mean... For those of you that are, are long-time IU fans, you know what I'm talking about. We can't beat anybody. We almost beat somebody. And then we almost beat a ranked team. That was a tangent. Anyway, they might catch the Colts game last week. At halftime, how are you feeling? I felt depressed, vulnerable, all of those things. But now, if the Colts had felt that way, what would have happened? They would have gotten beat 120 to 6. But they didn't. They went in and they realized that the game was not over. Well, if you're having a hard time in life right now, I want you to know the game is not over. Now, the Colts, you know, they have a really special player. Might you know what I'm talking about? Somebody shout it out. Yeah, he's, kind of, he's kind of special. Wayne. Wayne. Played the game, played a great game. Having somebody like that on your team is really wonderful when you're down. Well, you know what? We have an incredible team member. He's on our team. His name is Jesus. And he can't just, he can do more than just catch a football. In fact, this is what Paul says about him in Colossians. It says, for in him, speaking of Jesus, all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. And he's on my team. And he's on your team. He is the creator of all things. In him, everything that exists, exists because he exists. Everything is held together by his power. And he's on my team. And he's on your team. And he wants you to have now, he's never said he's going to take away every difficulty, every struggle you have, that he'll be there for you and with you. He's on your team. And he wants you to have a good life. Now, God has many, he's given us many empowering tools that in spite of our weaknesses and all the other people's weaknesses, they drive us crazy. We can have a good life. I'm going to talk about one that I think is, is very important for us, that God has given to us and Probably not new to people, but I'll hopefully that we can re-energize your, your understanding and your meaning as to what it means. It's a confession. It's an empowering tool of the Christian life. Now, what do I mean by confession? 